Hello, YouTubers. As usual, I can only imagine the hate I'm going to get on Reddit and other social media. I think I wouldn't make videos like this if I cared to gain subscribers. Allow me to give you a little insight into why I make videos. I find theology and politics interesting, plus they're highly controversial, so I stick mostly to those topics. I may start another channel sometime soon, but much more entertainment based. Either way, I'll always continue this channel because these topics are far more important to me than entertainment. Unlike many commentators and YouTube stars, I care more about giving my honest opinion than gaining subscribers. Even though I pay fairly close attention to the analytics of subscribers and viewers, I don't give it any consideration at all when making videos. I use the analytics to see what kind of base my honest views can attract, not to see what kind of videos I should make to get the most subscribers. As I hope you realize, everybody looks at the world through their own eyes, forming their world view. So the videos I make are kind of like a window that allows you to see how I look at the world. It's also fairly easy to see how social media giants wouldn't exactly like my videos. And it's been pointed out that YouTube and other social media sites suppress independent news in favor of established and traditional news outlets. Because of that, people have suggested that YouTube and other social media sites are a threat to free speech. I think such arguments are hyperbolic and, well, Social media is not a threat to free speech, though there does need to be some reforms, which I'll go into greater detail about in another video. My point is that there is a far greater threat to free speech in society. It comes from a particular form of culture and ideology, what is called identity politics, and is commonly practiced among those on the left. I'll state as clearly as I can, I hate identity politics and I wish it were removed from society. What is meant by identity politics? Well, essentially, it means looking at people as different groups entitled to certain rights. So, for example, women's rights or black people's rights or any other number of groups. And it's this kind of politics that divides people. A person doesn't have rights because they are a woman, or because they are born black, or anything like that. A person has rights because they are a human being. So, do black lives matter? Yes. Red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in a sight. So, really, all lives matter including black lives. Don't get me wrong, I understand that the current protests are about injustices that have been done specifically towards minorities, black people in particular. I fully support black people fighting for their rights. Who but a racist wouldn't be in support of that? It's not the protests that bother me, the negative consequences of identity politics that will likely increase as a result of these protests. Several people will probably be fired or not considered for employment because they say things that go against the crowd. I'm not talking about people saying racist things. If people say something that's clearly racist or hate speech, then they should be fired. But otherwise, who cares? Free speech is free speech. So it is the threat to free speech that comes as a result of cultural shift that I find most disturbing. Consider the protests that have engulfed our nation. From my understanding, the issue is that police are discriminating and killing black people. So fix that issue and compensate the victims. All this other nonsense is exactly that. Nonsense. But my fear is that people will, and already have, lost their jobs for saying truthful things. Just as people are fired for saying truthful things about our foreign policy. For example, now the police are so hated that when people have disagreements about defunding the police, or other actual policy changes for the purposes of positive reform, they run the risk of being thought of as racist. What's perhaps worse is that companies now seem to fully support identity politics mostly because they want good publicity and marketing and because they fear boycotts. So they won't hire people that go against the crowd. This isn't the first time that identity politics has caused problems in society. For example, the feminist movement has led to males being ostracized or fired for saying things that are pro-masculinity. But I think the results of these protests will show how deeply identity politics has rooted itself in our society. In my mind, that provides the best explanation of the cultural revolution that's taken place in our country over the last generation or so. And it is this cultural revolution that almost demands of us to conform, at least if you want to have a professional career. So people conform, or they lie, they say things they don't really believe. It is this form of tyranny, I submit, that is a far greater threat to free speech than anything social media has done. In my mind, it's a textbook case of what's called the tyranny of the masses this kind of mentality that does far more damage to free speech, wealth inequality, internal division, and overall damage to the republic. In the end, it is really this tyranny of the masses that destroys a democratic republic, turning it into an empire. 
what is this push for greater democracy destroy our republic and lead to an empire well I'll make a more detailed video about that sometime soon but first know that republics are designed to protect the rights of the minority in a democratic republic the more democratic it becomes the more the rights of the minority are suppressed eventually destroying the republic but before the people will be willing to demand a dictator for life certain cultural changes have to take place first precisely the kind of changes we are seeing in our society now for the record I'm in favor of the creation of an empire but not the way we're going about it that's all the time I have for now if you like this video please show your support by subscribing thanks for your time